Yeah, hi everybody. Good evening. Um, welcome to my webinar. I hope you can hear me well. I hope you can see me. Uh, I wouldn't mind if you uh, put it in the chat, uh, whether you can hear me or not. Well, if you can, cannot hear me, it will be a bit uh, difficult. But uh, if you can hear me, it would be cool if you could uh, say a word. Okay, Kathleen says, oh, good. That sounds good. Because uh, unfortunately, YouTube has changed the functionality on how to make these uh, webinars. So um, I cannot share my screen tonight. This is hopefully not going to be a problem. Um, yeah, I'm happy to see that obviously the sound is, uh, is working. Okay, cool. So uh, I think we can start right away. It's uh, half past six. Um, so once again, welcome everybody. My name is Werner. For those who uh, don't uh, know me, I'm the co-founder of Scapago, an online language school, and I have also published two Norwegian textbooks, uh, The Mystery of Niels and uh, Mysteria um Niels. And uh, yeah, today I'm talking about how to get your Norwegian from level A2 up to B1 and uh, uh, B2. Um, before I continue, maybe just for those who have issues understanding uh, English, um, I will try to do a similar webinar in Norwegian about next week. Uh, it will be also on this uh, YouTube channel. Um, just subscribe to the channel and uh, you can follow it. So let me just repeat that in, in Norwegian. So du har problemer med å forstå engelsk, jeg skal holde dette webinaret igjen neste uke på norsk. Det er bare å følge denne YouTube-kanalen. Okay, um, so why is it actually a problem to get from A2 to B1, not so much to get from A1 to A2 or from B1 to B2? So I can tell you from my experience in the school that most people get stuck after level A2. And in my view, there is two reasons for that. Uh, one is psychological, one is actually quite mathematical. I mean, if you just think of how we learn new words, when you're a beginner, you know 20 words, you learn 10 new words, you increase your vocabulary from 20 to 30, that's an amazing progress. So last week you couldn't order a, uh, a coffee, now you can order a coffee. Perfect. When you're really good, when you have like 2,000 words, 2,500 words, it doesn't really matter. You can use the language anyway. But when you're somewhere in the middle, you have 1,000 words, and you go from 1,000 words to 1,010, that doesn't feel like a difference at all. I mean, it isn't really a difference. And at the same time, with a vocabulary of 1,000 words, your Norwegian is still too bad to really use it fluently to communicate without effort. So that leads us a bit to the psychological issue um, that goes a bit in the same direction. And it's not about Norwegian only. It's actually, if you think of it, it's about everything we learn. If you learn how to play the guitar, if you learn a new sport, whatever you do, um, there is this time when you're not good enough yet to really enjoy what you're doing. But you're also not a beginner anymore, and it's not the excitement of learning something new anymore. And this is really the moment where most people drop off. And they say, OK, now it's too difficult. I, I'm giving up. I've made a huge effort, but I'm still not good. OK, let's, uh, let's stop it here. And to be honest, there is really no simple solution to fix that. Although, of course, there's millions of... Uh, blog posts and, 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 and books and uh, self-help things that will tell you that they have discovered the amazing method that makes you fluent in a ridiculously short amount of time. The point is, I think uh, Dante said that, uh, when you walk through hell, keep walking. That's basically, unfortunately, <laughs> um, that's more or less it. So you just have to get through this episode. Now, okay, this is a bit, uh, might be a bit negative. I don't want to end the, the webinar here. Um, I will, of course, dissect this issue now a bit more and get a bit more practical. So, um, as you might uh, remember, I've also 
done a survey before and asked uh, you guys what are your what is your experience with getting from A to B one or getting stuck at A two, and uh, I got like a few areas of um, uh, of problems. Some of them are specific to Norwegian, and others are general about every language actually. So uh, let me start with one of my favorite topics: is pronunciation. Um, those of you who have known me for some while have heard it a thousand times. I believe that pronunciation is more important than grammar, okay? At least until you reach B1 level. Um, most language teachers, unfortunately, in my experience, focus on the grammar. Uh, they will give you tasks to, to, to repeat every single detail to learn the article in Norwegian, to, which is really not such a big like, Deal because if you say like uh, I don't know an uh, vindu instead of et vindu, it's not a big deal. Everybody will understand what you want to say. But if you cannot pronounce the word vindu with the u at the end, for example, then Norwegians might have a problem even understanding what you want to say, and that's very frustrating. You 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 make the effort to say something in Norwegian and you pronounce it and people are, what, what did you say? Uh, it's frustrating and it gives you this impression, this, this bad feedback, oh, I'm never going to learn that. Um, the other thing is, uh, it is actually scientifically proven very well that if you have a good pronunciation then also your listening comprehension gets better. And listening comprehension is one of the big, big, big issues that people have when they are at the at the A2 level, because they say, well, uh, I can read, uh, I can even write, but when I speak and the other person answers to me, well, I might not understand the word. When I switch on the radio, I don't understand what's going on. When I listen to the, the news on the TV, I don't understand anything. So listening is a big thing. And actually one big barrier to improving your listening comprehension is the pronunciation. Uh, meaning if you train yourself how to make all these sounds, the E, the U, the U, and so on. The, in, in Norwegian, it's mostly the vowels, actually, that are complicated. Um, if you manage to do that, your listening comprehension will uh, improve. So how do you do it? We have a lot of free videos on this YouTube channel. Check them out. Uh, we basically explain all the sounds that are in the Norwegian language. Take the time to practice them. Yes, you will sound a bit weird. It doesn't matter. Wait until everybody is out of the house and you can practice. Practice in front of the mirror. Take a few minutes every day. Work on one sound until it gets good. Um, and then you move on. Ideally, of course, uh, you get feedback from a teacher um, if the sound is perfect. Um, if you cannot afford to, to have a private teacher, uh, at least work with pronunciation videos, for example. And work your way up. Work from sounds. Simple sounds, how to make an U, how to make an U, two words, and then to complete phrases. So I see that often in, in, in language instruction that um, teachers correct students on complete sentences. They read up a sentence, there's something wrong, and the teacher repeats the sentence correctly. The student is supposed to repeat it correctly too, doesn't really understand what was wrong, the teacher thinks uh, it's maybe too awkward to correct the student once again and moves on and focuses on the grammar again, okay? So that, of course, will not uh, improve the language. But it sounds a bit uh, sometimes uh, superfluous to, to work on that because people say, oh, yeah, well, it's not a big deal. I will always have an accent. Maybe you will. That's not the, the problem. The problem is not if you have a tiny color in your in your language that indicates that you're not a native speaker. I mean, you can hear if you're an English native speaker, English is not my first language. But I think my pronunciation is not that bad that you're sitting and you have to focus on what I'm actually saying. You will understand what I'm saying, I hope at least. Um, and it's the same with Norwegian, okay? Um, so another thing to think of when you practice pronunciation, when you believe that you're exaggerating the sounds, you're probably making them just right. Why? Because the problem we have as adults when we practice pronunciation is we have the sound repertoire of our first language as a reference. And everything that diverges from it sounds weird or wrong in our ears. So if you don't have the Norwegian E 
in your language, which probably you don't because it's a specifically Scandinavian sound, then it will always sound a bit strange until you're really used to it. So subconsciously, you think you're doing something wrong when you pronounce it, okay? And this is something you just have to get over. You have to practice for a while uh, until saying something like E feels completely natural. Um, yeah, so as I said, like when you practice pronunciation, when you think that you're exaggerating your pronunciation, then probably uh, it's just about uh, getting good. I'm not saying that grammar is not important. When you focus on grammar in Norwegian, I would say the verbs are the most important thing, okay? Practice the, the strong verbs, the irregular verbs, because you want to make past tense and you don't know what is the uh, past tense of I see it. Is it I saw or I saw or I saw it? Get that right. That is important. But all the declension, meaning the, the nouns, the adjectives, if you're not perfect with that, it's not a big deal. Also, the sentence construction, if you make mistakes with that, at the A2 level, it's absolutely fine. Just move on with it, and you can focus on that later when you're at B1, or maybe B2, okay? Then, of course, it should be, you should work on it. You, you want to be able to speak uh, and write with as uh, few mistakes as possible, but at the transition from A2 to B1, the focus should really be on pronunciation. If your pronunciation is not good, and odds are, if you have been to a traditional course, Sorry to say that, but odds are there it's going to be bad. Work on that. This is the biggest uh, quick quick win uh, you can actually have in the language. Okay, any questions about pronunciation at this uh, uh, at this point? Or um, uh, you will, of course, I, I will stay here in the virtual room uh, at the end of the webinar, and you can ask as many questions as you want. Um, but uh, feel free, of course, if I say something you don't understand or you have uh, additional questions about it, feel free just to type in your uh, your questions uh, here in the chat next to me. Um, there it should be possible to, um, to uh, yeah, I should be able to, to read your questions. Second thing, speaking, okay? Uh, most people mention that speaking is their uh, biggest issue. Third, people is, uh, third thing is listening. There is, funny enough, usually a slight male-female divergence. Males tend to say that uh, they have issues with listening and females more with speaking. Um, but both these two are uh, difficult, of course, because a text that you have in a book, it's not going to run away. You can read it as often as you want. You can look up the words in the dictionary. Uh, perfect. But uh, somebody says something to you, you don't understand, well, what do you do? Okay. So um, again, this is, of course, uh, frustrating. Um, and it also stops you from speaking because you get afraid of what uh, the reaction might be, right? So you say, uh, okay, should I really ask uh, that guy at the ticket office in Oslo at the central station about my train? Well, maybe I am able to prepare my question, but then what if he answers in Norwegian? Um, the other thing with speaking is that we have a natural fear of speaking in public speaking to people uh, in another language, it's just very normal. It's like you uh, sing in front of others. For most people, this is a bit frightening. Uh, talking in front of others, for most people, this is frightening. Dancing in front of others, uh, for most people, this is scary. This is uh, an awkward situation. And then there are these people who tell you, well, you have to step out of your comfort zone, and then magically everything is going. I believe there is a lot of nonsense in it, or um, at least it is exaggerated, because as I said before, it can be very frustrating. Uh, so you step out of your comfort zone, you ask the guy at the ticket counter, after maybe hesitating five minutes and sweating a bit, and, and then he replies to you in Norwegian, you don't understand, and he switches to English. And you're like, this is never going to work. So um, I do believe in this, stepping out of the comfort zone, but actually in, in tiny, tiny steps. And uh, I believe you should find your limit of scariness. I uh, 
call that uh, the, the onion principle. What I mean by that is that uh, if you have an onion, um, it has layers, and uh, you have the outer layers, you can pull it off, you have a smaller layer, and you need to find um, where uh, where is actually your, your limit of scariness. Meaning, if you're too scared of speaking to a random native speaker in the street, are you scared also to talk to your teacher? Maybe not. Would you dare to have private lessons with a teacher where you're alone with the teacher and the teacher will force you to speak Norwegian? Maybe that's not too scary, but maybe that's too scary too, okay? Or maybe you can't afford a private teacher, okay. If that's too scary too, would you feel comfortable talking to a friend? So for example, you have a Norwegian friend or you have a, yeah, I don't know, a tandem partner or something like that. Would that also be too scary? Maybe not, because maybe this is a person you know, you feel comfortable, you trust her or him. Um, maybe that's fine. If that's also too scary, um, what you can do at the, at the very least, basically, you can actually talk to yourself. You will say, yeah, well, that's not really talking, but it's not true. And because it's just like uh, if, you play the, if you want to play the, the, the violin, well, what do you do? You have to pick it up and you play it. And you don't need to do a concert in front of 150 people. Uh, you can start your practice by, by playing yourself. And at some point, you dare to play to a friend who is maybe also bad at playing the violin. And at some point, you dare to, to play to your teacher and maybe to two friends. And you know, so you build up your, your confidence by step by step um, pushing the limit of the of, of, of your scariness of what you're afraid of. Uh, but don't overdo it. If you're afraid to sp of speaking with native speakers, just don't do it. I have to say that uh, when I was younger, I was always uh, following this idea, well, you have to practice with native speakers, everything else is uh, just nonsense. Until I met someone who learned, uh, well, he was Spanish, and, and he learned uh, Spanish, in sp uh, he learned German actually in Spain, and he took a course, and every day after the course, with one of the participants, he went back home on the train. And they decided one day that on the train they're going to speak German, just for the fun of it. Their German was horribly bad. But the interesting thing was that they were, of course, both about at the same level. So their mistakes were quite similar, or at least complementary. So actually, with the years, I came to the conclusion that it can be very, very, very powerful to talk to someone who is about your level. So if you're at A2 level, you find another student who is also at A2 level, you meet in a cafe or at home or something, and you speak in Messi Norwegian. Yes, you're going to pick up mistakes from this other person, but it's not that bad, you can fix them. Yes, the pronunciation is not perfect, but you're not going to magically learn good pronunciation just by listening to native speakers. This is not going to happen. This is one of the myths uh, that people have. You get good pronunciation by practicing it deliberately. Okay, everything else is uh, not realistic. So I would say that the damage done by hearing a few mistakes that go uncorrected uh, might be uh, smaller than the gain by just getting practice. Okay, because speaking, you have to speak. This is like a, there is also no magical. There is no magical way around it. You have to speak, and if it is only by, as I said, uh, by speaking to yourself. For example, you talk to yourself about what you did today. You talk to yourself about where you're from, what you're doing, how old you are, what hobbies you have, and so on. Uh, you talk to yourself about your last holidays, about the job you would like to have, something like that. You can do that, okay? Again, by pushing the limits uh, slowly and slowly. Um, Okay, I uh, have a few questions here. Uh, John had the same, ex yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a frustrating experience, isn't it? Uh, especially in Norway, where people's English is uh, quite good. Um, uh, Vladimir uh, said, should we start with default book more pronunciation? This is actually something that doesn't exist. Or is it better to start with sounds of region where one lives? For example, I live in Stavanger and people speak very differently. Um, so, uh, yes, dialects, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the interesting thing is, except for the R, the sound repertoire in Norwegian is very uh, standardized. So, Vladimir, for example, if you have issues pronouncing the E, 
Uh, it doesn't make any difference whether you live in Oslo or in Stavanger or in Trondheim or in Tromsø. Uh, you, you will need it. So the pronunciation, the sounds that you need to learn are very, very similar whether you live in Oslo or in Stavanger. The only difference is the R that the Stavanger accent has, this, this French R, and the R that you have in the, in the east and, and the north. Apart from that, um, the, the, the pronunciation and the words and all that, that differs quite a lot. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit later. Um, yes, Emily had the same question. Um, then I probably don't have to buy a book, something that helped me with all my lips and tongue should be for different sounds and also. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not aware of a book that teaches pronunciation, I have to say. Um, I tried to do that in our pronunciation videos. So there I talk about, if you, if you look through that YouTube channel afterwards, you will find the Norwegian pronunciation videos and I usually talk about where to put your uh, tongue, where to put your, how to open your mouth or not open it or close it or whatever you, you, you need to do. Um, yes. So, uh, uh, recording of words. Um, so, uh, to be honest, the only one I know of uh, is in our own Norwegian course, in our online course. Um, uh, I will say a few words about that at the end as well. Uh, there we did do that. So, for all the words that are in the uh, in the book or in the in the in the course for the A1, A2 level, we recorded someone on video with with um, with, uh, with the words. So you can basically go watch uh, what she is doing with her lips, on. <laughs> and you have a, a short recording. If anybody is aware of something like that, um, feel free to to um, type in the chat. Um, I'd be glad also to have uh, uh, more information. Unfortunately, there is a lack of materials for learning in Norwegian. Um, I, I'm working a bit on that as I publish a lot of things for Norwegian, but uh, I am aware of it. And whenever I hear something that is interesting, I'm, I'm very happy to know about it. Uh, one more thing about this um, speaking issue. Um, I have had this idea like in the back of my mind that uh, I think it would be nice to have meetups where people can just gather and talk Norwegian for one hour or two hours at A2 level or at B1 level or even below A2 level. Um, if this is something that sounds interesting to you and you could see yourself organizing something like that, like posting it once a week on Facebook and uh, finding a cafe where you could meet and booking a table for the appropriate amount of people in your city, in your region, um, I'd be very interested to get in touch with you. Um, feel free to drop me an email. Actually, unfortunately, since I cannot share my screen, I have to print uh, the email address of uh, Scapago. This, this, this. Oh, okay. Can, can you read that or is it uh, the, the wrong way? Um, so it's info at scapago.eu. Uh, I will put it in the chat also. Uh, info at scapago.eu. Um, yeah, I would be very happy to get in touch with you if this is something you could see yourself doing and then maybe we can discuss the details because we have people that are following us in different regions of in the world, so I would have access to people who might be interested in that, but unfortunately I don't know people in every city. I cannot organize it in various cities. Um, but So if this is something you could see yourself doing, um, I'd be very happy to um, hear from you. Um, Norwegians are usually good in English, and that's bad for you because they tend to switch back to English very quickly. Okay, so I've heard this many times, and um, the 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 problem is that uh, well, it's frustrating, and usually Norwegians are not aware of the fact of how frustrating that is. Why? Because they're exposed to English from a very young age, so they learn it really as kids. They watch. American movies with subtitles at home when they are very young. Um, so through years and years or decades, they learn English or are exposed to English and are quite good at English when they're young adults. And they're not aware of how much energy went into it 
And now when you come to Norway, you're 35 years old and you just started learning Norwegian two, three, four, five months ago, they don't understand that this is very, very, very difficult for you and that it takes a lot of energy and a lot of uh, work and time and frustration and so on. And one thing that I have heard many times helps is actually to make people aware of that. To just talk to them. Of course, you cannot do that with a random guy in a shop in a, in a coffee shop. That is not going to work. But for example, with a coworker or a neighbor or someone you meet in the sports club or something like that. What you can do is tell them, hey, I really appreciate it that you speak English to me. It makes it easier for me. But you know what? I would love to learn your language. And maybe you're not aware of how much energy you put into learning English. It will be just as difficult and just as much work for me to learn Norwegian, but I really want to, and I'd be very, very happy if we could take at least some time and speak Norwegian. And please try to speak slowly, very clearly, and with simple sentences as, as much as possible. Um, for example, if you're at work, you might find an agreement with a coworker that you like that you're going to speak Norwegian just in a lunch break. Okay, you can say if English is your work language and everything works in English, but during the lunch break, would you be so nice and just speak in Norwegian to me? Well, of course, maybe the conversation is going to stop up uh, early, but it might be a trick that helps. And then you have somehow, you have found a, a partner that might stay there because the people that are aware of, aware of it, uh, they might grow into that role of becoming a language partner for you and they will help you in the long run. Okay, um, because as we said before, it's a long-term project, so you might just uh, stick to that. And then the, the daily lunch break in Norwegian, in messy Norwegian at first, it will add up to a lot and help you a lot. Okay, one thing that I did once with, uh, with a friend was uh, uh, I didn't allow to speak English, I'm learning the language, and uh, we agreed on paying a small amount of money whenever you did. So when he didn't stick to the agreement, he had to pay a small amount of money. And at the end of the month, we went partly from that, uh, from the money. So that is also something that could work, actually. I've tried it myself. myself. It's fun and it's, uh, uh, it makes people actually uh, stick to that. So maybe you can try something like that. Okay. Um, okay. I guess as the problem is uh, that literally no one is learning to speak in Norwegian around you. Where are you based? I am would be helpful to know. Uh, yes, uh, then I, I believe that too. So if Norwegians understand that you're really, you're not doing that just out of politeness or just, uh, uh, but you're really interested in the culture and the country and the, uh, usually people are interested uh, to help you learn it. It usually applies basically to all small languages in the world. Uh, you might have had this experience when you go to America, of course, everybody expects that you speak English. When you go to France, people expect that you speak French. When you go to Spain, people expect them to speak Spanish. But you go to Denmark and you speak Danish and people are amazed. Or you go to Czech Republic and you speak Czech and people say, wow. Um, so, yes. Uh, Catalonia, okay. Uh, yes, so that is really an, an issue um, because I can't believe that there is really nobody. Maybe in Barcelona uh, you would find someone. Um, we have been thinking about doing uh, online meetups of that kind, uh, but unfortunately we haven't come uh, very far with it yet. Uh, but if you'd like to stay in the loop, uh, I, you might also just send me an, an, an email um, to the address that is there, info at scapago.eu, and uh, I, can, I can keep you informed. Um, okay. Uh, so, so much to speaking so far. Um, the third big issue that I put before, way before the listening even, uh, is, uh, that, I, that I heard from you is um, uh, time. People say, I don't have time. And to be honest, usually that's not really true. Because the, the thing is, you know, we, we all have, I think uh, it was some, uh, was it some American president or some management guru or probably the management guru stole it from the American president. Uh, I don't know who said there is this difference between things that are urgent or important. And you have things that are urgent and important, like a fire in your house. Uh, and you have things that are only important, only urgent. And then you have things that are neither important nor, nor, nor urgent. And the problematic thing is, are the ones that are important, but not urgent. 
because it can postpone them all the time. And that is something with language learning. And it's the same, by the way, with working out, for example. You want to work out, well, if you skip one training session, it doesn't make any difference. So you can <laughs> you start skipping all of them. And of course, it, uh, then it does make a difference. Um, so usually when we say we don't have time, the problem is more that we haven't built up a habit or we haven't built up a routine where we would just focus a couple of minutes every day on yeah, learning Norwegian, for example. Um, I, when I teach, I, I can be a little bit mean. And when my students tell me, oh, yeah, the last two weeks I didn't have time to go to Norwegian, I ask them, the last two weeks did you also not have time to brush your teeth? Uh, and usually they told me, well, of course I brushed my teeth. Um, but the point I want to make is when you brush your teeth, it takes you three minutes in the morning, three minutes in the evening, six minutes per day, 40 minutes per week, 80 minutes in two weeks, okay? Do the same for Norwegian. You will see some effect. Okay, so it's not really the not having time. We're all we all agree about that. Uh, you do have time. The problem is how do you put a routine to it? And my suggestion is um, make a small commitment. It should be very small because it should be easy to stick to it, and it should be a bit shameful to break it. So don't say something like I'm going to do one hour per day. No, it's not going to work. Um, also, don't do something like, well, I'm going to do it all Sunday afternoon, because the effect is not as good as if you practice every day. Um, do something like, I'm going to do it five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. I'm going to repeat vocabulary in the bus when I go to work. I'm going to read one page in the book every evening. I'm going to, something like that, something that you think, okay, whatever happens, even in a very chaotic day, I can actually stick to it. It's, it's going to work. And attach it to something else. Like, for example, the bus. Because then you have this trigger. Whenever you get on the bus, you're like, oh, okay, I need to get out my flashcards or maybe my app or my book or whatever and, and work a little bit on it. Then if you have the time to do more, fine. But this minimum you're going to do. Okay, So this will actually help you with uh, what I said at the beginning when you walk through how to keep walking. Uh, don't give up. If you do something every single day, you might not feel an effect for a month. You might not feel an effect for two months or maybe three. But after six months, you're suddenly going to see or someone else is going to say, hey, hey, hey Nor your Norwegian has improved. It's actually better, better than it, uh, it used to be. Um, because otherwise, it's a little bit of a vicious circle. You don't practice, you get frustrated, you think that, well, I'm never going to learn that. So you don't make the time. So since you don't have the time, you don't practice and it gets worse and at the time it just stops up. Often you're like, oh, well, I haven't done anything with my Norwegian last year. And then suddenly, well, um, okay. Uh, any questions about this? Like how to find time, how to make time? Uh, and Dennis, uh, the, do, 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 do. oh, sorry, I, I, I forgot. Uh, uh, okay, courses for Swedish, but not Norwegian. Okay, that's a bit sad. Um, but uh, yes, so uh, again, I mean, what you can do also, as I said before, um, if you are if you are interested in maybe starting an own group, uh, feel free to get in touch with me because. Um, through the Facebook page that we have and through the email, we can actually f send uh, specific uh, reminders to people that subscribe to us and that are in uh, specific locations. So don't worry, we don't know who that is, but uh, we can get in touch with you. And, um, so maybe there is somebody out there, but they're also hiding on the sofa and don't know that three streets down the, the hill, uh, there is someone else who is not learning Norwegian. So maybe we can... Uh, uh, make something worry out. Um, says, thank you. Okay, look at it in Lofoten. Very beautiful. Cool. Um, I have one book, but it doesn't correct you or help or hear from how you are off. So I'm not sure if I'm repeating correctly. So I know on Vassir, uh, uh, yes. So when you go for a textbook, I always recommend textbooks that have uh, a key to the exercises, at least, so that will correct you at least with a grammar. Of course, it's impossible with a book to get feedback on your pronunciation. That's just the nature of a book, unfortunately. So in this case, uh, then uh, you would really have to go for lessons with a teacher. I know that's expensive. Um, I know that uh, this is not affordable for everybody, but what I can say is that 
if you take like four lessons with a teacher to focus on your pronunciation uh, and just do the pronunciation, tell the teacher right away, you only want to do the pronunciation. It will help you for the rest of your Norwegian learning career. The earlier you do that, the better, because then it's off the table. Um, so that's really not a, best, uh, not, a, not a bad investment. I believe, I mean, I'm biased because we <laughs> sell these lessons. If you scroll down under the video in the description, you will have a link to it. Um, we sell Skype lessons, but um, yeah, but go to our competitors <laughs> if you don't believe it. Um, okay. and. It, Tips on moving to past tense verbs. I'm comfortable with present tense, but no, the past tense is frustrating. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure in what way it is frustrating. Well, it is frustrating, of course, that you have uh, the, you somehow have to learn them again, right? You have to learn, you have learned, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 verbs, and now you have to start again. That's frustrating. Yes, I know, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, I would say my my suggestion is again uh, make a commitment, but a small one. Three irregular verbs per day, something like that. Okay, and you put them on flashcards. You put the present tense on the on one side, uh, the past tense on the other side. You look at the present tense and you check whether you can guess the past tense form. I'm a bit old fashioned. I like these flashcards sometimes. Um, I'm going to talk about it in a second. Some they don't do everything, but Things that you have learned before, you can repeat them with flashcards, quite cool. And writing something yourself, you know, handwriting on paper, that, that trees, the things you used to have before we started uh, with PDF files. Um, it's actually quite, quite useful. Um, you can apps, use apps as well uh, if you think they, they, they help you, but I do believe in the, also the, this haptic experience of writing. Um, uh, Duolingo for these basic things. Yes, why not? Uh, if you like Duolingo, no problem. Uh, okay, Polo Pitten, the URL I sent. Okay, I didn't see this URL, Polo Pitten. Uh, maybe it was further up. Uh, and it has recordings and... Uh, Okay. Uh, well, of course, the recording is never the problem with the feedback. Is well, it's going to tell you it's wrong, but you don't know. It's not going to tell you what is wrong. It's not going to say your mouth is too open, your lips are too high, your teeth are too close together. But yeah. Uh, so therefore, um, let's say for getting feedback on your pronunciation, you need a teacher. That's uh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, talking about tones, Robert says, in one text I have the writer says, tone can make a difference in distinguishing one meaning from another. That's true, but not in all dialects. So I would not worry about tones too much. They're a thing in Oslo. Uh, I have a Northern Norwegian dialect and have no clue about the tones, to be honest, uh, because in these dialects, the tones are not as important as uh, they are, uh, as they are in the South. Um, that does not mean you shouldn't ignore them completely. The intonation is uh, somehow important, um, but it varies a lot within Norway. And I would say that this is something you can really learn by imitating native speakers. And having the tone wrong or having an intonation that is not natural is not going to be something that will lead to a misunderstanding or will make you sound completely weird. This is not going to happen. What causes problems is if you cannot, if you cannot pronounce certain sounds, if you don't know how to say an U, if you don't know how to say an A, if you don't know how to say an E, uh, this causes problems. If you have the wrong tone on the word, um, yeah, I know there's this, uh, I think it's uh, between Bönner and Bönner uh, in Southern Norwegian uh, accents. Um, but to be honest, out of the context, you will understand what, what people mean. So, uh, um, yes, it's, it's not a big, it's, it's, I would say that it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I just want all English verbs by heart, not words, but it takes an effort. Five verb words every day. Yeah, uh, Anne is asking like how many uh, words per day. That's really up to you. Um, if you find that five is too much, go for three. If you say five is too easy, I want to learn first of all, go for seven. But don't say, oh, I'm going to learn 15. 
and you do that two days and then you're stuck and you can't remember anything, well, then go down and say, okay, 15 is too much. Let's start with five. And if I can cope with five, well, I can, uh, I can do more. Uh, Polo Pitten says from NTNU. Yes, NTNU has, uh, has a Norwegian course that is quite good as far as I've heard. Uh, Norwegian on the web. Uh, if you Google it, you're going to find it. Um, okay. Uh, Maria Jose Martinez Vega says, do you have a comprehensive verb list you can recommend? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there is one at the end of our books, but apart from that, uh, to be honest, I'm not really, I'm not really sure because the problem is comprehensive is not really helpful because you don't want to learn 500 verbs now. So you don't want to learn all irregular verbs in Norwegian that might be so rare that nobody uses them. And maybe even some Norwegians have issues finding, knowing the post tense form because I haven't heard it in the last 15 years. Um, so I would rather go for the most used ones. And that's usually the ones that you have in the textbooks. So I would start with the verb list from the textbooks. If you want to look up a, 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 a verb, I recommend the, um, uh, what is it called? Urbok uh, Danish That again, it's called uh, I'm um, putting the link here, it's ordbook.uidea.no um, and there you can look up the form of every verb. So if you're not sure about how to conjugate a verb, you type the infinitive, you can look it up. And you will get examples and explanations in Norwegian how to use it. This is a very good, uh, it's a very good dictionary. Mm, put them in context. Yes, Anya. So, uh, this is actually my next um, my next uh, comment. Dr. Kelly is saying the same. So, learning vocabulary without context doesn't really work. Um, it is, by the way, one of the reasons why I started um, uh, writing these Norwegian textbooks. So, so maybe that's for the advertising block. I mean, some of you might know I have published these two textbooks: uh, The Mystery of Niels, um, so this one. And uh, Mysteria on Niels. Uh, this is for A1, A2, and this is for B1, B2. With This one has English explanations, and we have additions with uh, German, Spanish, Polish, and Russian uh, explanations. This one is purely Norwegian. Um, and the, the thing about it is that the, the, the texts in the chapter are based on a coherent story. So the story starts very, 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 very simply and it gets more and more complicated. Um, it goes through both books. So if you want to know how the story ends, you have to learn Norwegian. And my experience with it is that the words that are introduced are in the story. So somebody says it in a specific context, in a situation that is maybe a bit weird, sometimes a bit absurd. It's much easier to memorize it like that than saying, okay, here is 10 sorts of vegetables and I'm going to memorize them. Is much more difficult. Um, I don't want to say that you have to buy the textbooks now, and <laughs> but I know from experience also with teaching that many people tell me, oh, I, I know this uh, word because when I was waiting at the metro station there, somebody said, and then this happened. And, or I know this word because I heard it in a fairy tale. And I know this word because uh, it wasn't someone's t-shirt and uh, I, I found the t-shirt funny and I looked it up. And so if you remember them in, them in context, it's much better. And that's why I believe in, in this concept of learning in, in, in context. And uh, that's why I wrote the books actually, but uh, okay, enough advertising for books here. Um, what uh, I would though recommend to you, don't just pick any random words. When you... Go for a commitment, like saying, I'm going to learn three words per day, five words per day, something like that. Take them out of a context. Either it's your textbook. If you like it, go for it. It doesn't have to be a horse take. Take other textbooks. It can be from a children's book. It can be from something you're interested in. Whatever you're interested in, which is not too difficult, write them down. You see an interesting expression um, in the metro. Take a picture of it with your phone. Look it up at home, what it means. Um, Put it in your, put it on a flashcard, if you're old fashioned like me, put it in your private memorized deck, if you're a bit more tech uh, savvy and you prefer to learn with an app, something like that, because these words are going to stick. The 10 random vegetable sorts, chances are you're not going to remember them. Or you can learn them today, and if I ask you in one week or two weeks, 
you might remember one of them. And this is also very frustrating. And especially, you remember the, the, the simple calculation I made at the beginning, uh, when you want to go from 1,000 to 1,500 words, or from 1,500 to 2,000, if it's not a little bit pleasant, it's going to be very painful. And if you don't make any progress, because you cannot remember the words, it's not, it's not really fun. Okay. Also, you don't have to learn every word that you come across. So some people make this mistake. Uh, they read a newspaper article, they look up 25 words, and they want to memorize all of them. No, just write down two, three, four, or five of the ones that you think, oh, this is an important one, this is an interesting one, this one I want to. Try to become a little bit a collector of, uh, uh, a collector of uh, words and, and collect the ones that you find, uh, that you find reasonable. Um, I see the chat is becoming very long here. Uh, in link use, uh, says Dimitris. Oh, hi, Dimitris. Happy to hear that you're <laughs> there. Uh, you can download Norwegian text and highlight new vocabulary and phrases to store for later study. That's quite cool. Uh, there is also Read Lang, a Chrome extension that uses Google Translate for the Norwegian websites that you're using. Okay, that's also quite cool. I mean, uh, Google Translate, we're all aware of it. Don't, uh, don't translate uh, your... Um, uh, poems from English to Norwegian is not going to, to work. Um, but, uh, but of course, as a tool, absolutely amazing. If, you're, if you want to read some things, a little bit too difficult for you. But find the sweet spot with the vocabulary. Remember, or, or, or uh, put down notes on the, ver on the words that you want to learn, that you find interesting, that more important to you, that you have some emotional connection to, and don't don't uh, try to to find every, don't find uh, try to translate every word and, and memorize it. It's, it's not going to work. It's not a very good idea. Okay, and also think of this repetition element, which is very important because you see it once, you're going to forget it. You repeat it. You remember the situation where you learned it. You, you will remember it. Maybe you have to remember. Uh, you have to repeat it a couple of times. So find some system like with the flashcards. You can put them on the pile. The difficult ones you can repeat them. Apps usually do that also. The ones that you that you don't remember, they will present them to you again. Uh, have a system of that kind that will make you repeat words and phrases uh, a bit more often. And if you want, what you can also do is uh, you can write down the context where you where you heard it. Uh, you can say it was in Billboard and uh, It was in a movie. It was something, and it's going to stick easier. Okay. Uh, John Rock says Mysterio means is great. Okay, that's cool to hear. Denna says they are great, but B2 throws so much vocabulary is tough but very good. Yeah, exactly, Denna. So um, uh, it throws a lot of vocabulary, but you don't really have to memorize everything. Because that uh, B1, B2, we start with texts, uh, like the original texts, extracts from novels, uh, something like that. Of course, there's a lot of vocabulary, but you do not really need to learn every single word of them. Uh, hi, native is also a great way to ask about new words and expressions. Uh, yes, Dimitris, I'm not uh, familiar with hi, native. Um, if you can maybe put one or two words about what it is, then that's really cool. And yeah, thanks for the uh, compliment on Mysterio Nils, Mysterio Nils. Uh, yes, vocabulary lists are painful. <laughs> um, the most efficient ways to prepare for the period of theater. Okay, Mara, Mara uh, this is a little bit off topic here, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, I might do a Bad Against Test webinar uh, a little bit later um, uh, this year, uh, or you can also send me an email. Um, yeah, hit the guys to Hi, hi to guys to you. I tried some similar approach with flashcards, made a go to watch Harry Potter 1 and learn Norwegian phrases from subtitles. Very good idea, um, especially what can work very well is to reread a, a book that you already know. So you read a book in English or you're in your first language, whatever it is, and then you reread it in Norwegian. And you can put them in parallels, okay? And you can say, oh, okay, this is a cool episode. I like this episode. I remember it. The vocabulary is going to stick. Um, absolutely remember those words for the test. How to learn them later, yes. I prefer old flash, old fashioned flashcards. Uh, yeah, if you're out of battery. So yes, of course. I mean, but that's really up to you. If you're, if you're saying no flashcards, uh, this is not the 1980s anymore. Uh, I don't mind. I'm just saying that I personally prefer that, but uh, it's really up to you. 
uh, etymological dictionary, that's a good question. Um, so the, the one that I put, it has etymological comments, but not very deep ones, unfortunately. Um, yes, winder means wind eye, that's true. Uh, by the way, even in English, so window is a word that comes from Norwegian. The Vikings brought it to uh, England, as far as I know. Uh, Anki uh, is quite cool. Um, yes. Um, okay, so, so much to the vocabulary. I promise I'm going to talk a little bit about listening. I said before, uh, the listening issue is really about the, um, make, uh, the, the idea of not making it too difficult, okay? So I suggest that you listen a lot to the materials that you have, number one, that you listen to people that speak very, very easy Norwegian. Where can you do that? Well, unfortunately, there is a big lack of materials in, um, uh, for Norwegian. Um, one that I know is Clark Tala. Uh, it's a website that has uh, texts in simple Norwegian, and they're also read up. Uh, you can uh, you can use that. Moshkara Karense has a podcast, says John Rock, and that's true, and she's very good at what she does. So this is also something I recommend. Um, we actually, in the online courses that we made, we put... Uh, exercises that are deliberate for practicing the listening comprehension to the level that you have achieved. So what we did there, and actually I have to say, I, I stole this uh, method from a very old textbook that still had cassettes, you know, the, the people that are born after 1990 might not even know what that is. It's these plastic things that you put. They had cassettes and they would make you, uh, for example, react to um, phrases um, by, for example, changing the word order, changing the grammar, doing something like that. Well, that means that you had to listen and you had to react. Um, but of course, the vocabulary was accustomed to your level. So if, they, if you were at chapter 15, then the exercises to this would not present you with vocabulary that was way beyond chapter 15. They would basically just use the words that you already knew. So very little frustration and a lot of effect. Uh, because you you can basically take these exercises and uh, listen to them and, and and clean the window and then you can talk to someone as if you had a teacher but you don't have a teacher. Uh, so I copied this. We made exercises for this for the first course uh, of the Mystery of Niels. They are down, they are now downloadable, so you can also put them on your phone and walk in the forest, which is a bit cooler than in the nineteen eighties. Um, and uh, we also made them for the uh, second online course. Um, uh, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in a minute for the level B1, B2. Um, we actually, for the first time, we have them recorded in a studio. Um, so uh, unfortunately, the sound quality for the first ones is not so super perfect, I have to admit. Um, but for the, for the second book, they, they should be much better. And uh, I hope that this is also uh, somehow helpful. Mm, one thing that is a little bit annoying about Norwegian is that it has a lot of dialects. We have been talking about that a little bit before. Um, the problem is not so much, as was mentioned before, that the sound repertoire is very different. Actually, it's not. Uh, the main differences are with the pronunciation of the R. And there is a number of videos about that on our YouTube channel also. You can just watch them. Uh, you will understand it, I think. Mm, but of course, the expressions themselves uh, the way people intonate, this is difficult and it takes time to get accustomed to it. Now, one thing uh, that is quite uh, special with Norwegian is that um, you have, uh, it is quite acceptable even for foreigners to speak in a dialect. So you can just move to Stavanger and speak like, learn to speak like someone from Stavanger. When you learn Norwegian abroad, usually you stick to a pronunciation that is somehow close to how people speak in, in Oslo, uh, just for practical reasons, nobody really knows uh, knows why. Mm. So one thing that also can help and might be a bit counterintuitive, learn a little bit of Nynorsk, the second written uh, language in, in Norway. So uh, if you read articles on Anarko, for example, I think one in five or one in 10 articles is in Nynorsk. Uh, try to understand them. Try to look words uh, up in, in, uh, in uh, in the work in the dictionary, uh, because many words that are in Ninoshk are actually 
uh, taken from dialects. That's basically how Ninosh was actually constructed. So if you know a few Ninosh uh, things, then it gets easier for you to understand dialects, funny enough. Mm, you do not need to write Ninosh, of course, it's absolutely not necessary. Also, this is something to think about from level B1 and above, not before. If you're at A2 now, please don't focus on the dialects. I would say that's a bit too, too early. Um, get an impression, listen to, uh, listen to a recording that's in a dialect. Um, I think we have on, on uh, the Mystery of Neil's website also, uh, there is recordings of the same chapter read by someone from Trondheim, from Bergen, from Oslo. Um, so just that you get an impression of what is different in the dialects, um, but learning them yourself, that's, that's a bit too early. Okay, so do this a little bit uh, a little bit later. If your dialect or the dialect from your region is very weird, there's a cool thing actually that I can share with you. It's called Mura Vinan Sula, and it is also by NTMU. Uh, and this is a, re a collection of recordings of a short text uh, by people that have very different dialects. So you have a map and you can click on the location and you can hear the same story read or told by persons with different dialects. So if you live in a tiny place in Norway where you say the dialect is very specific, you might find something that's actually quite, uh, quite close um, and uh, you might learn something about the basic characteristics of your dialect. Uh, I have to say that uh, dialects are underrepresented in Norwegian teaching, and I hope that we can make more material on that in the future. Um, yes. The last thing I think, well, as I said uh, before many times, uh, there is lack of, uh, of simple materials, and uh, we try to fight that a little bit. With, uh, with our courses. Um, so I told you before about the two books and quite soon after we published uh, the first book, um, this one, we made an online course uh, based on the same book. Uh, this online course is, uh, it comes with a lot of additional material, meaning there is grammar explanations on video, there's pronunciation videos, there's these downloadable exercises that I talked about. Um, and now we have finally managed to finish the second course, the uh, uh, course for the level B1, B2. And uh, I decided to make you a little offer if you want to join it, because these courses are subscription-based. That means you pay per month, uh, which should motivate you actually to finish it as quickly as possible. The, the, the basic idea behind it. Um, but also, of course, if you don't like it, the risk is very small. You take it one month. For the first month, we would even refund you if you don't like it. But, uh, well, you can take it two months and you see no effect and you cancel it and you haven't lost uh, a, a lot of money. Um, but uh, since uh, this course is very much delayed and uh, you have been listening to the webinar now for such a long time, um, I created a coupon code which will make it possible for you to, um, to uh, have the course with the first month for free. So uh, you can, uh, I'm going to put the, the address where you can find the course in the, um, in the text. Um, so it's in the, you can see that. As I said, uh, YouTube changed this functionality a little bit. Uh, so this is the website where we have our online courses and you will see the course for the beginners and you will also see the blue course for the uh, B1, B2 level, meaning you should have around level A2 to join this course, uh, but you will achieve level B1, B2 by, by going through it. Um, and if you put the a coupon code and the coupon code is uh, launch meals. So like this, okay. Uh, if you apply this coupon code and the purchase program uh, process until Saturday, then you will get the first month for free. So you can of course cancel during the first month if, and you will pay nothing at all. Uh, but even if you if you um, if you want to continue, you, we will you not charge you for the first month. You will only be charged from the second month on. Um, with the online course comes access to a Facebook group where you can meet people, where you can ask questions uh, if you're up to that. 
Um, and uh, yes, again, I hope that these materials will help you first because of the story to put words in context, to learn things in the, in the context. And then also because of the audio materials, you might improve your listening uh, comprehension and also your, your, your fluency by reacting to these uh, exercises um, more than by just listening to the radio or doing something like that that is very frustrating. Um, yes. Uh, so are there any questions about uh, listening dialects or uh, the course uh, that we're just launching? Feel free to put them in the in the chat. Um, let me see. There is a link. Can you repeat the suggested resource to practice dialects? Um, it says Marsa. Um, it's just above your your chat. It's the H F N T N U N O N O S. I think this is Nora uh, in Osula. Uh, that is a quite a quite a nice uh, resource. I posted it also under this video. If you watch the video description, uh, it should be there. Um, you also have the link to our course, and you also have the link to our textbooks and to our one-on-one -on -one, uh, students, one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one lessons with the uh, teacher, sorry. Vladimir says, uh, I've lived in Stavanger for five months, and last month I finally understood what that weird word my colleagues were saying was ikka, but yes, they say ikka, so ikka is one of those words that are different in <laughs> wherever you go. So uh, you can say ich, uh, you can hear ich, uh, you can hear ich. Um, depending on the dialect, these uh, uh, much used words are actually quite different. It's the same with jai. Uh, it can be ag, it can be eg. Uh, it can also be very, <laughs> very different and very different, difficult to, to understand in, in these situations, of course. So again, Nienosh helps a little bit because, for example, in Nienosh, you would write ich. So whenever somebody says that, it's not completely out of the blue. Uh, you might say, okay, it sounds a bit like something I've heard before. For example, all these question words in the Norwegian dialect, uh, in the northern Norwegian dialect, mm, they start with a K. So you don't say va or them, you say ka, kan. Okay? Uh, and then Nenosh, you would write something like kva. So you see that there is a certain connection. Um, the dialects are not completely arbitrary. There is a certain shift in sounds that, that happens between the dialects. And when you are a little bit familiar with Nenosk, you might somehow anticipate these shifts in sounds uh, a bit more. But then again, this is a topic for a little bit later. I would say about B1 level. Uh, before that, don't focus on it too much. Don't get frustrated too much when you when you walk in the street in Stavanger and uh, you don't understand what people are saying. If you are at A2 level, you're not supposed to understand them. It's perfectly fine. Uh, this is just part of the game. It's like you're playing uh, the guitar for one year and you think you play very well in a jazz band. No, it's not going to happen. You can play a birthday song, which is fine. Uh, you can play maybe a few other simple songs around the campfire. At, but the jazz band, that's straight too early. Uh, and that's just normal. It's just it's it's no reason to worry or no reason to think. Oh, I'm not talented. No, you are. You're absolutely talented, just like anybody else. You just need to spend more time, and at a certain point, uh, you will reach the the level that you want to reach. Paul uh, Potten says, "I agree. I like to read a page or a chapter and then listen without looking at books, so to see." how much I can recognize. Also, some players allow you, I don't know what they allow, ah, to slow down the speed so it is easier to understand the speaker. Yes, that's great, of course, um, if you have that. Um, definitely, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a plus. Um, again, uh, listening to books um, that you know or reading books that you know is also, is, is also helpful. Martello says, uh, I really would like to learn Trenesk, but I don't live in Norway. Should I try to get my pronunciation right as soon as possible? Actually, wait until I reach an advanced level and try to switch. So my first question would be, uh, is there a specific reason why I would like to learn Trenesk? Um, if not, then this is something that, uh, like, it doesn't run away, okay? So if you learn, like, a somehow standardized, it's not really standardized, it's just a random standard because it's a bit close to book mode, uh, the way people speak in, 
in, in Oslo and around. Um, if you learn that and then you move to Trenelag and you want to pick up the style, like you can always do that. Uh, what is more important, as I said before, is the sound repertoire. How do you say U? Uh, how do you say U? Uh, how do you say SH? How do you say this R, L, sound R, car? Uh, these things. When you get that right, applying a dialect is not as difficult as you as you would think. Mm. Yes, I have some cousins who say ich ja, and you can feel yes, I know. <laughs> so some people say ich ja, some say ich, say ich ja, and some say ich. Um, okay, do you know any series similar on, to see that on see that? Uh, to be honest, not really, unfortunately. Um, Cedric says, uh, is it live teacher session? Um, Cedric, I'm not quite sure what you mean. The online course that I was talking about on Teachable, that is not live. That's pre-recorded. So this is for self-study. Although you can meet... Uh, like you can meet students in the Facebook group, you can uh, ask a question in the Facebook group, but it's not with a it's not with a teacher. We would not be able to do that for a price. But you can also book sessions with a teacher one on one uh, through us, and there is a link under this video. Uh, you can basically for all our sessions with a teacher, you can take a free demo lesson where you discuss with the teacher what are actually your needs, what you want to do. Um, the teacher will assess your level, get an impression of uh, how much you already know, um, where you are at, and then you can decide if you want to move on or not. And maybe even uh, if, if it's just like a specific uh, pronunciation issue, maybe just the demo lesson will actually help to uh, to to get you uh, to get you over it. Um, Dr. Kelly says, well, I know how absolutely useful Niels is in learning mush. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you. I wish this research was available in my Spanish, French, Italian studies. So uh, we are actually making textbooks for other languages. We just published a Swedish textbook, which is called Alfred the Ghost, uh, which is a similar concept. Of course, a different story, um, but a similar concept. Um, you learn Swedish with a story about Alfred, who... Uh, well, it's a bit more of it. He was hit by a car, and now he lives as a ghost, but he's happy with it because he has always been a, a loner, so he doesn't mind. Uh, he lives on his own in his house, but the problem is that now a new family moves into his house, and he gets very annoyed by them. And then he sees that there's something weird about this family, and the book is about life of them. And we have a German textbook also about the based on a story it's uh, two sparrows from berlin and they have something with the berlin wall and the removal of it um and we will soon publish a chinese textbook uh with a horse jerry the horse um for spanish i am actually planning uh to make a french textbook from next year unfortunately spanish and italian is not realistic before maybe 2021 or 2022. <laughs> so if you guys are patient and stay with us, more languages will come. Um, the code is for the monthly subscription to the Niels course. Yes, to the second Niels course, the blue one, uh, which uh, is actually launched today. Um, this is what the code is uh, applied to. Um, yes, so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. Uh, and keep up the work, as I said before, it's um, it's more or less just, uh, well, as Santa said, when you walk through hell, keep walking. And don't pressure yourself also too much. Don't, uh, like, sometimes the problem is that people have too high expectations. They're like, in three months, I have to do this. Uh, no, you don't. Like, do something every day, steadily, slowly. And if it doesn't work today, don't worry, it might work tomorrow, it might work next week might work next month just keep keep on doing something mm. shadi says i will be in oslo next week besides the needs books do you have any books recommend that i might pick up while i'm there i'm at the beginning of the second needs book um well what you can do uh shadi is basically just go to a bookstore and look at simple children's books and open them, look at them, see what you think is feasible, and also what you like. So I'm 
not very happy to give a specific recommendation because maybe it's something that you say, no, I'm not interested at all. Um, but maybe you can just uh, try that and uh, go to a bookstore that's uh, like Nordli, the big one in, uh, near the university in Oslo, for example, has a very big selection. Or also, as I said before, uh, a simple book that you have read in your own language and that you might reread in uh, Norwegian. Maybe also at a later time, because when you've just, um, uh, you say you're beginning of the second Niels book, so you've just finished A2 level, you're slowly moving towards B1, which is perfect, but maybe also rereading a book that you have read before, maybe children's books is still a little bit too difficult for you. Uh, if it's frustrating, maybe just pick one or two books and uh, take them and put them on the shelves and start them in half a year or something like that. Uh, for I would you do this for Icelandic? Says not my Ernie. Well, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do for Icelandic. Maybe publish books. Unfortunately, that's not on in, in the pipeline right now. Um, for Niels Part Two, your course has 27 chapters, whereas the book has only 16. What's the difference in addition in the course than the book? Well, um, the difference comes from the fact that we have um, we have the introduction also. So uh, the books are also structured in a way that if you have a two level already, then maybe you don't want to reread the story and buy this book just to know what's going on in the story. So what we do in this book is we repeat the whole story in a shortened form at the beginning of this book, but we will make you work with it actively. So for example, in the chapter where we introduce the past tense, you will have to fill in the past tense forms yourself. Um, so by that way, either you have read the story, then it's a good repetition, or you have not, then it's an introduction to the, to the story. And at the same time, it is a uh, consolidation of uh, what you know about, uh, about the grammar and the vocabulary. Uh, we're doing the same in the online course. So therefore, uh, there is a divergence in the chapter numbers. Uh, have you got the mystery of Niels translated in English? All of that. Sometimes I find it difficult to translate part of it that is not reported in reference in the book. Um, so, Laura, I think you're talking about the second book, right? Because the first book does have very deep explanations and also vocabulary in English. Um, but... Um, uh, but... Uh, so the second book uh, is purely in Norwegian, but we were thinking of translating at least the word lists to English. Uh, that might be suitable for some people. At the same time, I think when you are at the A2 level, then it's also time to somehow get rid of a helping language. I know that sometimes for vocabulary it's good, but sometimes it's also a little bit bad because people think tend to think too much in word-on-word -word, uh, translations. Meaning, when you're at the basic level and an apple is just an apple, uh, there is nothing to discuss about. But when you get more advanced, there is concepts that are um, more abstract that you're going to learn. And then suddenly there is, no, uh, there is not necessarily a big overlap between the translations. So uh, let me think of an example. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm not coming up with something uh, right now, but uh, it can be an idiomatic expression that is completely different in Norwegian and in English. It can be a verb that means somehow doing the same thing, but not really. Um, so, for example, dra. Well, dra means uh, to pull, but it can also mean to, to go. It means I will go to Oslo tomorrow, okay? Um, why do you not say ask a go to Oslo? If you say ask a go, then it means you're going to walk. So it's a bit um, the the translations are not matching each other perfectly. And as you are getting better and you want to use the language uh, very well, uh, these nuances start getting a little bit important. And then if you focus too much on translations, on direct translations, um, then that might be a bit confusing also. But I know that sometimes it's difficult to give a definition in Norwegian is difficult to understand it um, and then an English translation might be helpful so we might be doing that so just uh, subscribe to our newsletter or watch in the, in the YouTube channel and we'll inform about that 
Um, Agnes says, when I'm a Spanish teacher, what do you think about doing a Spanish course for Norwegians? Well, I would love to, I yeah, but uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> time, time is always a bit limited. But if you want, feel free to uh, send me an email. Uh, I think I put the address uh, at, the, at the top. Uh, I will put it once more because this applies basically to all of you. If you have any questions, something that comes up after the webinar, something that was not answered here, uh, feel free to send me an email and then I can uh, help you. Um, Ricky says, thanks for some reason, the code says it's invalid for the A1, A2 Niels monthly subscription. Uh, let me look into that, please. Uh, Ricky, if you could also... Um, send me an email about that. Uh, it would be great. I will check it after the webinar. I don't have access to the course now here in the um, during the video, but I will check it afterwards. And uh, then I can have a look. Uh, how many sustainable timeline one should give for each course? That is really difficult to say. Um, I'm very... I'm not very happy about uh, giving a concrete answer to that. Why? Because... Um, this is very, very different depending on your situation. So if you are, uh, it depends first of all, how much time do you have? Can you learn all day or just in the evenings or just uh, a little bit or one hour per day? Uh, do you have experience with similar languages? Have you maybe learned Norwegian before in another setting, in another context? Um, all of this is very, very individual. And I know there are language schools that say, well, it takes you 372.3 lessons to get to level C1. I don't believe in this concept. It is very, very, very individual. There is really no uh, real answer to say. So there are people who say, well, I do one chapter every week. Uh, some people find that completely impossible. And some say, well, to be honest, I did too. Um, so my suggestion is uh, Mr. BPM75, um, try it out for yourself. You have the coupon code, uh, you can't, uh, uh, yeah, you're not going to lose anything. Test it for 30 days. Uh, even without the coupon code, if you're charged, uh, if within the 30 days, send us an email, we'll refund you uh, if you don't like it. And see how far you get. And then you can get a, a, a certain estimate. Okay, but I'm really not happy giving a prognosis. Um, I, I find it not very realistic, although I know that for marketing reasons, most language schools do it, but I, I hate doing it. Um, okay, are there any more questions about uh, yeah, either the course or learning Norwegian in general or our books, our teachers, if uh, there's something about that, uh, that would be the right uh, moment. Otherwise, uh, uh, what I find quite uh, helpful some sometimes, um, we've been talking about a lot of things to do. Uh, there is also a list of things of what not to do. <laughs> so let me sum up a few things that I've, but if you, if you don't do them, it might actually be beneficial. So for example, one thing I talked about it a lot, don't necessarily talk to native speakers too early. It's not necessary. It's going to frustrate you. Uh, you do not really need to have a conversation with someone. I know there's these uh, YouTube challenges where people say, oh, uh, I was learning Tagalog one week and I had this interview. And uh, For some people it's cool. For me, it's very frustrating. If I learn Tagalog uh, in one week, I could probably not be able to say my name. So uh, I, 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 I uh, don't find that very very helpful. I would say feel free to, to focus on people to, um, that are a bit on your level. And also don't, don't step too far out of your comfort zone. Yeah? Don't learn every, every word you come across. It's frustrating. The ones that are in context, the ones that you like, the ones you find useful, these you're probably going to memorize anyway. But you can also push that effort a little bit or push that uh, effect a little bit by, by, by putting them down and writing them and uh, yeah so so that might be quite helpful. Uh, don't if you're not at level B1 and up, 
don't listen to radio, don't listen to, to TV. I, I see this many times. They say, oh, you need to hear authentic Norwegian. And people have this concept that they, they, they switch on the radio and then magically they are somehow going to learn Norwegian. No, I can listen to Chinese radio for 10 years. I'm not going to learn Chinese. It's not going to happen that way. I'm just going to be very, very frustrated. So uh, don't do that too early. If it's too difficult, it's too difficult. It's not you as a material that is wrong, okay? It's not something that's wrong with you. Um, and again, don't focus on the grammar too much. The, the verbs, okay, the irregular verbs, regular ones, get that right. Everything else from level B1 up, okay, take your time, repeat that, repeat the some sort of planning, all this, these things. But really, up to then, it's nice to understand it. So read the grammar explanations so that you get the feeling of how the language works. But when you speak Norwegian, this is not what you should focus on. What you should focus on is pronunciation. Get the pronunciation right. This is a big advice I keep giving, and people keep ignoring it. Um, get your pronunciation right. It's a quick win. It's not as difficult as you might think. Um, and uh, yeah, you will improve your language. Uh, a lot. Uh, do you have a way to create stickers for all of the vocabulary words that way one can put object words directly? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, Mr. BPM75, by stickers. I mean, of course, you can do that with flashcards, so you can just move them around and you can make up funny sentences, for example, with verbs and nouns that don't match, and you might try to find a sentence that somehow make them match. It could be a system to learn vocabulary. Uh, Laura said, uh, you could uh, rephrase that. Have you got a Facebook group? Yes, we have a Facebook group that uh, you're invited to uh, when you join the, the course. It's called Vlada Norsk. It's very easy. The best radio station for Barigensk. I have no clue, Dr. Kelly. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, if you drop me an email, I can try to look it up. The problem is this. In Norway, people speak with their own dialect throughout their lives. So uh, if you're, for example, familiar with the situation in Germany, that's very, very different. You're born in Bavaria, you speak Bavarian dialect, but then you move somewhere else, and you might just accustom your way of speaking to standard German. Um, then you speak standard German, your kids are raised in standard German, they might not even speak your dialect anymore. Uh, in Norway, this is completely different. So you're born in Badigan, you will talk in Badigansk. Whether you're interviewed on a national television, whether you're a professor at university, whether you will, you will speak Badigansk uh, dialect. It's very rare to, to, or much rarer than in other languages, to lose your dialect. So um, therefore, if you go for the for the national radio station, but even for the radio stations in Bergen, um, if somebody is interviewed who is, who is from Oslo, uh, they will speak in Oslo dialect. If somebody is from the north of Norway, they will speak in the northern dialect. So there is no radio station that broadcasts in Bergen's speech. Just everybody speaks the way they they were raised. Um, but then, of course, it's possible that a local radio station in Bergen might have more locals that are in the station and therefore speak more Bergen. But to be honest, I'm not aware of it. Uh, but again, maybe it just drop me an email and I, I can check out. Uh, I can check if there is uh, uh, something like that. Um, Ah, we have someone, John Rock, uh, knows something. If you have Android, check out NO Radio app or no radio up, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. There's a list, you might find something for yourself. Okay, that's quite cool. Um, Mr. BPM75, what I mean is instead of standard flashcards, it's English to Norwegian translation, yes. I may want to learn a word, I want to directly apply to an object as through action. As you. Yes, of course, you can do that. So for example, you can write uh, the verb on one side and the object on the other side. Uh, and then you can practice to, like for example, you find uh, a verb that usually is combined with uh, um, with another with a typical object. Uh, I don't know to make coffee or lager coffee. Uh, well, it's maybe not the best uh, example, but you can learn idiomatic expressions that way. That you just divide them and you write one part on the front of the flashcard and the other one on the back, and then you can also test yourself by looking at both sides. You just try to complete the the. Uh, the flashcards. By the way, there is many, 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 many methods. Uh, I've seen someone learn uh, German with my German textbook by 
of remembering the story by heart. This was very weird for me. I've never seen something like that. Uh, so he was able to recite chapter by chapter. He could just sit and, and he would write everything on the computer because he said, uh, I have to learn how to write properly. So he would sit, listen, uh, read a lot, of course, you can imagine, and then learn it by heart and then sentence by sentence and his daily practice was rewriting the whole story on the computer. Never seen something like that. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, but for him it works. So why not? You know, so find out the things that, that work for you also and drop it. If, if somebody says, well, this is an amazing method, you, you have to try it, but it doesn't work for you, well, don't do it. Uh, everybody, everybody is different and it's just very normal that you might have a completely different learning style from someone else. So don't let other people, don't let uh, teachers or, 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 or YouTubers or whoever uh, force it. Try something, but if it doesn't work, dismiss it. Um, Brandy, it's quite frustrating learning a written language book and then needing to learn a dialect. Yes, I know. Uh, for all the people who ever tried to learn Arabic, uh, it's even worse because the written language is completely different from uh, what is uh, spoken and, 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 and uh, the written language is not even used and spoken in it's a bit similar actually the situation so uh, do you see that people have difficulty learning dialect after learning book more in Noshkush? not that much actually brandy i would say the problem is again matching expectations so say you are at b1 level which is quite good which is amazing because it means you have 1500 to 2000 words it's very good if you think of it um and that means if you are at B1 level, you can somehow always continue a conversation, meaning it can be very messy. You might make big mistakes, you might, be, but you're not going to say it to, 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 to hit that point where you say, okay, no, I have to stop, I have to switch to English or another language. Uh, that's basically B1, where you can somehow work yourself out of the situation, unless maybe it's a topic that you don't know anything about, of course. But uh, even then, you can say, I don't know anything about the topic, I'm mean, <laughs> talk about something else. Um, and then, so you have learned that with some Eastern Norwegian dialect, and then you expect that you can participate in a conversation with, say, two people from Stavanger without any effort. No, that's not going to happen. That's, a, that's an unrealistic expectation. Uh, and again, it's not about you, the problem is not with you, it's this expectation of the people who expect you to do that is not going to work. Uh, so what these people need to do is um, they need to pronounce very well very slowly and try to speak as they write, which some Norwegians are quite good at. Uh, so you can ask them, can, can you try to speak bokmål? Like, can you try to speak bokmål? This is something that Norwegians usually don't do, but they can try it. Um, and it's going to make it easier for you. And uh, then if you can follow the conversation, you're also really good. And then the dialect will come. So once you're, once you can have conversations like this, then you can start thinking about the dialect. Then you can start thinking about the particularities. Like, for example, in the Southwest, they have this different pronunciation. They have this R in the, in the, in the uh, throat, which means also all the combined letters are different. Again, you can watch a video about that. And don't have to explain all that. Uh, there is a video about that on, on our uh, YouTube channel. And you can learn the words that are common and that are different. And step by step, you're going to grow into the dialect. Uh, but it's not something you would think about when you're at A2 level. Um, Dr. Kelly says, I highly recommend the teachers. My teachers are from Bergen. That's Kapago. My teacher is from Bergen. And there's a dialect I grew up with. That's cool. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, so we try to, of course, if we know, for example, a student lives in the West, we try to find a teacher from the West. Um, or at least a teacher who has uh, familiarity with the dialect that is spoken there. So that's not completely off. Um, but uh, but yeah, unfortunately, dialects are part of the difficulties of the Norwegian language. Okay, uh, feel free to uh, ask questions uh, if there are still questions left. Um, otherwise, again, uh, the uh, you can join our course until Saturday with the uh, first month for free, and the uh, the code is, as I said, well, launch nails in capital letters, uh, like this. Uh, put it in the chat. Mm. If it doesn't work, drop me an email, or if you have any questions, uh, 
uh, drop me an email. This is our email address. Um, yeah, and otherwise, uh, thank you everybody for participating. Um, and this says, when do you plan to have B1 online course? Uh, it's there. That is actually, yeah, today the B1 course is there now. Uh, Laura asked where I'm based. I'm actually based in Germany, in the south of uh, Germany. Um, yes. Are there any more questions right now? Or, yeah, it's been an hour and a half, so thanks for staying through. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's been a pleasure to at least meet some of you in the in the chat, um, and uh, yeah, again, I'd be I'd be happy to hear from you if you have any questions, if you have suggestions for the the meetup groups where you can uh, you know, talk to each other. If anybody would be willing to organize something, or at least thinking about organizing something like that, uh, maybe you can get in touch with me. It would be cool, and we could. Uh, set up a Skype call and, and discuss uh, discuss options. So uh, yeah, I also say uh, to some talk. Uh, thank you very much to everybody, and uh, yeah, I hope you will continue learning Norwegian, and I hope that uh, the webinar uh, has been helpful. There should also be a replay. I think you now usually it's available quite fast, so maybe after an hour or something like that. Maybe up tomorrow, if there's something you would like to rewatch or share with your friends. Uh, feel free to do it. Feel free also to subscribe to this uh, YouTube uh, channel and click on the clock so you get a notification when we put out new new videos. And uh, yes, Sean Rock had a suggestion. Can you release answers from the back as a separate PDF? Mm. Uh, well, theoretically, we can. I don't quite see the advantage because then you always need a separate PDF to look up the, the, uh, the solutions. Um, but but yeah, but that would be an that would be an option. I think for the if you have the book, I think I even have a PDF of the solutions, so I could send you one uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, again, just send me an email. Uh, yeah, okay. So if there, are, uh, yeah, not not cheat. Yeah, of course you shouldn't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an exam. So uh, uh, when you do exercises, of course, you should look at the solutions afterwards. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining. Thank you for participating. I wish you a nice uh, evening or afternoon, or you know, depending on where you're based. And uh, again, I'm happy to, uh, to hear from you soon. Okay. Hold it all.